Okay, so I'm just searching right now. Yeah, let's okay. go. Oh. Okay. Hey, everybody. Can I just minimize this? Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Do You Believe? And my co host tonight with me is Tim Wood, <laughs> founder Hello. of Live Sci Fi. And uh, tonight, Tim and I are going to talk about the Amityville horror, um, whether it was. Paranormal homicide, paranormal assassination, you guys make that decision. But we, we're going to discuss it tonight and talk a little bit about the history on the house. Yeah. And Tim has some experiences that he wants to tell you about that kind of coincide with the Amityville murder house. Right, yeah, gonna, Tim? Yeah, we're going to be doing some uh, kind of a new twist. Um, on. Uh, or provide, I'm going to try to provide some new insights, and, uh, kind of what I believe what actually went on there and, and stuff. And... Uh, go off of what we know as actual fact and kind of uh, also talk about what is uh, some of the myths associated with the house and, well, and the legends. So. There's a lot of myths and legends about the Amityville house. Yep, yep. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, there was a house on that property at 112 Ocean Avenue. It was a small house built in the 1800s and that house was having a lot of activity going on. People would move in and they wouldn't stay very long. So the owners of the home had the house lifted and moved several blocks away, which I believe now is on South Ireland and Carmen. And um, the house uh, that is on there now, 112 Ocean Avenue, it was built by the Mo Mo Moyans. 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 Who, who, who were they? Um, they were, um, this was a, a man, a very wealthy man. He came over to uh, New York, to uh, Amityville, which is supposed to be a friendly town. And um, he bought this land from uh, Annie Ireland. And a year later, he commissioned an architect to build him this uh, Dutch colonial. And so in 1925, he had this Dutch colonial uh, built, and it's the house that stands there today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and which is actually contradictory to the movie, because in the movie, it's an old, old house that was built, I guess, in the 1700s. No, it was built yeah. in 1925. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, there was a house, but but that one is just a little that was moved. Right, um, right. Okay, so this house has had, oh gosh, like eight different owners. And uh, another thing is, uh, they said that every person that has lived in the Amityville house had tragedies. Well, mm -hmm. I kind of checked back on all the other owners and there was just a couple of things that were happening. One of the couples that sold the house that stayed there about maybe eight years, uh, they ended up getting a divorce. One of the families, um, their son got killed. There wasn't that much tragedy going on. Right, right. Um, with the owners in the house. So, now the thing... Well, why don't you show them all your notes you, you've took? <laughs> <laughs> all my notes? Yeah. Yeah, all your, pages and pages, pages, pages of notes. Pages. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the murders. And, and the thing about Tim and I, uh, what we've been talking about, and, and this has also been quite um, the subject on the Amityville, is how the bodies all were in the same position when they were shot. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty creepy. But let me, let me tell you a little about, about the well, land. What, yeah, we'll talk about the land let and me, we'll let talk me, about the And rest. then we'll go into that. So also, um, myth, legend, whatever, um, the house is supposed, the land that the house is built on, uh, the Montauk Indians, were in that area, and they buried the um, uh, other tribes on that land. And what they did was, when they buried them, they buried them face down, so that they would forever see darkness. 
So that's kind of a. Uh, that's kind of creepy. Yeah. Now yeah, according now yeah, according yeah. to Hans Holzer. Now you guys all know who Hans Holzer is. He's a famous. He was a famous parapsychologist and a psychic. Now he did also some extensive research on the Amityville. And he, he found in uh, the library at Amityville, and of course there's no, they can't find any record of this anymore. And I believe Hans, I, I don't think he, he tells stories. Anyway, he's now passed on. But he said he found that information from a librarian in the Amityville um, library, that this was a true fact. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't have anything. You know, it's so hard to separate. You know. And so, and so, Han says that there's a bad Indian spirit that lives in that house on on one one twelve Avenue, uh, Ocean Avenue. Uh, and another fact is that uh, the Crom, the Italian family that owned the house, um. The Crom, can you pronounce their name? I can't. I'll oh, it starts it with the C. Yeah. I can't pronounce their name. They had the address changed to 108. Yeah. Um, they recently sold it, right? They've recently sold it, and another family now owns the home. Yeah. But according to Hans, there's a bad Indian spirit chief who does not want anybody on that land or in that house. Uh -huh. And um, it's also said that. Uh, that uh, Ronnie DeFeo Jr., w which they also called Butch, um, was possessed. That's freaky. Yeah. yeah. Um, they so believe that he was possessed. Why don't we talk about the actual murder? The oh, actual okay. Scene. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then we'll talk a little bit, uh, we'll uh, go back to. Okay, the, the all right, thing. so what do you want to start with the murders? Uh, who he killed first? or Now, I know that uh, that he was in a rage that night. Yeah. He, he, you know, he used to fight with his father all the time. The, the harmony in that house and the vibes for an Italian family, it was really bad. The parents used to fight all the time. Um, and, and the father and the son never got along. They were always at each other's throat. In fact, right. one time uh, they were at a, um, having dinner and uh, Ronnie got so mad at his father, he pulled out a, a shotgun and he, he went to kill him. Wow. But, but it, the, there was something wrong with the shell and it didn't go off. Jeez. So he put the gun down and he just walked away. But that's the kind of awful things that were going on in that house. It must have been horrible. Yeah. All the fighting and the screaming. And all that just disturbs everything. All that right. negativity yeah. just brings in all that stuff into a home. Um, so the night that... Do you want to talk about the night that he went to kill his family? Uh, I'll let you do it. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. He... He was, for some reason, he was in a rage. Right. He, he was angry with his father, and uh, he was in a rage that day. And so, as the family slept, um, you know, there's three stories to the house. And mm -hmm. as the family slept, that rage just kept building up and up inside of him. And he decided he was going to kill him. So he went and he got his shotgun out of his closet, and he loaded it. And I believe that the first victim, uh, the first assassin. That was a marlin. It wasn't a. Uh, it was a. It, 20, was a, it was a. Uh, it was a marlin. It wasn't a shotgun. It wasn't it was a, a shotgun. Rifle. It was a rifle. A rifle. Yeah, okay, a rifle. I don't know the difference between yeah. a rifle and a shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Of course, one one article you read will say shotgun, one will say rifle. No, no it's a. It's a. It's a, it's a yeah, rifle. It's a rifle. Yeah. And this and okay, so he <coughs> uh, loaded it, and I believe that the father was the first victim. And he went in there and he, he, he shot the father. Now, if I can find my notes, um, I, can, I can give you, uh, let's see. Now, one of the weirdest things about this whole thing is uh, all the bodies, I mean, uh, were found face down. Yes, they, they were, found were face all... down. And they were all in this pretty much the same position. Right. And if, you know... Going back to some of the other cases that I have been involved in, such as Valeska and stuff like that, where you had a person walking around and uh, with a hatchet, pretty much an axe, and you know, kill people. And uh, 
I just find it highly unlikely that one that under normal circumstances that you would have six people sleeping on a you know on a calm night and not be awoken by uh, shots. And I believe there were nine shots that were fired. Pro yeah, you're right. Yeah, there were yeah. nine shots that were fired. Anybody that's ever fired a rifle knows that <laughs> I've never fired one in a house, but I've, I've gone to shooting range before and done uh, some shooting. And I mean, you have to wear earplugs. I mean, sometimes I wear two sets of earplugs. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, rifles, so they're so loud. And they're, they did an know, experiment. Yeah, so they did it, I mean, an experiment where they actually did a test. And the only, you know, they actually were able to hear the shot for, from like two blocks away. Yes, yes. You know, so. I can't imagine, even if there was another person involved in the um, in the killings, uh, I find it highly unlikely that these people would not be in different positions or there would be different uh, blood you know, well, dispersions and stuff like that the, the, under normal circumstances. So. The first shot that ripped into his father, ripped into his father's back. Yeah. And then it t it tore through his kidney and it and it exited through his chest. Right. And, and now. And, and not that many people uh, sleep face down. I mean, no. Who, who in the chat room? Let me see here. Let me open up the chat room here. Sorry. I hope. Oh, by the way, I hope everybody had a merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Merry yes. Christmas, you guys. The lady Merry Christmas. Hey, scared. All right, so, uh, yeah, I do look more serious. I can read the chat actually better. So, uh, yeah, who in the chat sleeps face down? Let's just take a poll in the chat right now. We have 100 something people in the chat right now. Who in the chat room sleeps face down? Seth does. Not me. I do, okay, I do. Well, on my belly, okay. I sleep face down, me, not I, okay. Well, majority of the people, I, yeah, I don't sleep face down, I would say. No, I don't either. I don't either, it's gotta be pretty uncomfortable. Um, okay, so do you wanna hear with how the shot, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the, so yeah. the, the shot, the first shot ripped uh, through his kidney, exiting through his chest, and, um, there's the bodies. Then um, he fired another round again, hitting his father in the back. And um, as you can see, there's a picture of uh, Louise, the mother, and the father. And that's where, how they found them Jeez. on their stomachs. Okay, then the next victim. Oops, that's not it. Where's the mother? Here's the mother. Here's the next victim. The next victim was Louise DeFeo. Pretty Italian lady. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, again, she was, um, okay, she, now actually they said that she roused herself a little bit. She aroused herself? Yes, she aroused herself, and, uh, but she had barely a few seconds to react before his son began to fire Wait, when you say her. aroused herself? No, roused. Oh. Rous oh. I didn't say aroused, I said roused. I thought you said aroused. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Roused herself, so, you know. I just and, never heard, I always think aroused, I think, yeah. <laughs> All right. And so anyway, she barely had a few seconds to react before her son started um, firing the shots into her. Uh, he aimed the weapon at his mother as she lay prone on the bed and fired two shots into her body. And there she is on the... Uh, it's on my left, so it will be on your right, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, the bullet shattered her rib cage and um, collapsed her right lung. Uh, and now both bodies lay silently on the bed. See, I just find that so weird. So that guy fired two shots, and the lady didn't, like, I mean, I would have, well, I mean, nobody could sleep with that. Well, several on her and several on the father. Yeah, now, these it, things are loud. Yeah, do you ever fire a rifle? No. I no. mean, like, you gotta, uh, you know, pull the, the uh, thing back to exit the cartridge out, and then you gotta, push another one back in, so... 
Well, the thing is, I don't know how far away he was <clears throat> from his victim yeah. and, or how close he was, but it, regardless, uh, the loud uh, explosion of the shot going into the body is going to be extremely loud. Yeah, and once again, for the people in the chat, uh, there's some maybe some disturbing pictures. So if you don't, guys don't want to see uh, bloody guts. Uh, I do, I yeah. do. Now, all these pictures that I've pulled are on every website. Yeah. Now, these are the uh, only pictures that uh, I guess they were able to get, and, and uh, every newspaper in town had the same, same pictures. Everybody, every website, all has the same pictures. Yeah. So I, that's where I got my, my pictures from. All right. All right, then the next, um, next, his next two victims were his two brothers. <sighs> Let me see where... Um... There were a total of seven people in the family, you guys. Yeah. Okay, um, okay, it was Mark and John. Now this is Mark. Mark was 12 years old. And um, uh, the, the shot, he, uh, he tore through the young bodies, raging their internal organs. Laying waste to the waste to the lives that lay ahead of them. Mark lay motionless while John, whose spinal cord had been severed by his brother's heartless attack, twitched for a few moments before the shooting. Again, the shots had not aroused anybody or any members in the DeFeo family. Mm -hmm. So this was Mark. <laughs> I mean, but once again, you guys, these are separate rooms. So imagine you you, you even if you ran, let's say you shot you're using an automatic rifle. Think about it. You, you're, you know, you're in separate rooms. You got, you say you shoot two people, then you got to run well, over actually, to the other room. The two boys shared this room. Yeah, but so you got to run over to the other room. But, but the thing is, he he's shooting one boy. No, you already shot the parents. You he, shot the parents. Right, you were right. to wake up. They That's were on another level. Yeah. But here he is in the same room with the two boys. Yeah. He's shooting one. He didn't shoot them both at the same time. Yeah. And so what was the other one doing yeah. while this was happening? It's bizarre. And so this was Mark, and this is, um, they took a picture after they removed the body. They took a picture of the uh, mattress. And... Um, and then this is this is little John. He was nine years old, and he uh, shared the room with his brother. I don't know how the heck this came off. I can't figure it out. And there's his body, and um, this is the mattress after they removed the body. So I, I can't figure that out, Tim. Yeah, I can't either. Makes me sick. <clears throat> Then the, the last uh, two victims were his sisters. And uh, Allison, 13, and Dawn, 18. And this is a picture of Allison. She was 13 years old, a beautiful girl. And um, he, um, let's see, he lowered the rifle to her face and pulled the trigger. His younger sister was murdered instantly. And this is, uh, they took a picture of her laying in bed. And then this is the picture of her. I don't know why they did this, but... Wait, what was the other picture? Yeah, this was her in bed. But then they rolled her over, and, and, and I don't know why. That's crazy. And, and they took a picture of her in, in, in bed. And then, and then there's Dawn, who was 18. Yeah, I don't think there are any types of silencers for that type of rifle. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, that makes silent. Yeah, I never I just need a silencer for a mm -hmm. one. No, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. And Dawn, um, uh, Dawn 18, he um, he aimed his weapon at Dawn's head as well, literally blowing the left side of her face off. Yeah. And uh, they took a picture of her in bed. And then again, they, they took a picture. Um, That's horrible. I know. Yeah. And this is all on you, on, uh, on uh, the internet. So after, <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, so after um, after 3 a.m. in a span of less than 15 minutes, okay, uh, 15 minutes, um, let me get a picture of, uh, of DeFeo here. After fifth, after three a.m. Uh, and this only took him fifteen minutes. He he was done. Really? Yeah, he All was right. done. Yeah. Um, I think he uh, um, he calmly. They said he calmly showered, trimmed his beard, and because um, he was trying to get together an alibi, and they said he was cleaning things up with yeah. with. Uh, um, Pillowcases. He was cleaning things up with pillowcases. Uh, he dressed in his jeans and work boots, and then he collected all the bloody clothing and rifle, wrapped them up and put them in a pillowcase, and he headed out to his car. He threw the evidence into the car and took off driving to the suburbs into Brooklyn. He disposed of the pillowcases and its contents by casting them into a storm drain. He then returned to Long Island and reported to work as if nothing happened. This was at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, uh, when the there were no sh when the uh, murders actually happened, I guess the only thing that was heard from the neighbors was the dog. Was the barking dog. Right. And and the funny thing about it is, Ronnie DeFeo hated that dog. Right. He hated that dog, but he didn't kill him, and I don't know why. Weird. All he had to do was take that rifle and shoot the dog, and he didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so the rest is history. He's in, he's serving a life sentence. Uh, from what, um, he, he will not give anybody the same answer twice. Right. So many people have interviewed him. He said the devil made him do it. There was voices. He was listening to a movie, and the voices in that movie told him to do it, but yet the rage, he was raging inside that night. In a way, and he's kind of like Charles Manson. Yeah. I, I, it's kind of like, I mean, even the, the looks, the pictures, and stuff like that of him. Uh, a lot of the interviews, if you guys have ever uh, watched any Charles Manson interviews, they, uh, he never says the same story twice. No, he, yeah. he Ron DeFeo. A lot of that could be done, like, due to like all the LSD he took or whatever. You know, yeah, you well, know. he's crazy, yeah. too. Yeah. And um, let's see, like I said, Hans Holzer investigated the Amityville, and so did uh, yeah. Lorraine uh, yeah, yeah, Warren. Yeah. And um, she, she said that he is possessed. Mm -hmm. That there's demons in that house, right? And it, and and like Han said, that there's an angry Indian chief that does not want anybody in that house. And because Ron Ronnie took drugs and stuff, I think he was susceptible to this paranormal. And I believe I um, uh, uh, Warren uh, Lorraine Warren said that he had some uh, paranormal capabilities. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, should we talk about the Lutzes a little bit here? Yeah, yeah. Now, okay. Go okay. Ahead. Well, so uh, go back to uh, what's interesting. Uh, if you guys didn't catch the beginning of the show, uh, Norman was talking about the uh, was it the Mol Moloch or oh the Mon 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 Talk Indians. Yeah. They used to bury the the damned, uh, the living damned, yeah. the people who they wanted to condemn. Yeah, they're from the other tribes. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, they would bury them face down, and whether. DeFeo, whatever, uh, knew this at the time. It's kind of eerily similar to how all these bodies were found uh, face down in their bed. Um, perhaps it was paying uh, some type of respect to uh, the ceremonies that this Indian well, ceremonies that were taking place the, before. Well, they, they buried them face down so that they're, they're, um, they would be looking into darkness forever, for eternity. Yeah, maybe that's... And, you know. and with... The similarity in in the DeFeo family being killed, um, they're thinking that there's some kind of a connection, some kind of ritual connection yeah. uh, to that. Because why not one was another turned over on their side or they were all face down and there had to have been a reason for that. Right, right. Maybe that's the reason. Yeah. Uh, well, you see, if, he, if Ronnie DeFeo was possessed by this Indian chief, that's what that Indian chief would have wanted done because he doesn't want anybody in that house. He right. didn't want anybody. 
If you guys have any questions in the chat, uh, just go ahead and uh, type them in the chat. Um, for those that are watching on YouTube, uh, you can visit our chat at live sci fi TV. Uh, we're going to be taking questions too. Now, so. I want to show you this picture. All it's right. controversial. Let me show you this picture. And we should have sound as we talk. Yeah, we do. We have sound. Okay. Um, this picture here, the picture uh, with the little boy behind the, uh, can we, I'm sure they can hear yeah. us, uh, behind the staircase uh, is a picture that Lorraine Warren took. Right after uh, all this happened, they did uh, a paranormal investigation over there, and she took Channel 5 News with her. And they, they didn't find this picture till three years later, after the investigation. Yeah. And the other picture has a picture of the two DeFeo boys, Mark and John, and then uh, this, these people here in, uh, uh, um, put in, uh, what do you call it, it included the, the ghost picture. Now, it's very similar to either one of these boys. Very similar. If I had to put money on it, I would say it'd be the bottom right one. The little, little yeah, the little boy. Yeah, yeah, the nose. The noses are almost identical. Yeah. Um, in that. And also, if you look at the, uh, the hair, how it's a little parted over. Um, it looks more parted over on the um, little boy as opposed to the, 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 the left one. Yeah. Left one just looks like a mop. And it's really John. sad because, um, yeah, he's John DeFeo, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. let's see. I guess see. Mark is the younger one, right? Is it um, Mark or yeah, the guy? Um, yeah, Mark's the older boy, yeah, he's right, 12 right, yeah. and John yeah, is, John. um, yeah, the younger one. Now, uh, here, I don't know if you guys want to see this, but here's a picture of the funeral. They're carrying the, uh, the, cos the uh, caskets in, and this is a picture today of uh, Ronnie DeFeo. He's, uh, this was when he was 60 years old. So he is uh, in, incarcerated. Cucks. But you know, the thing about it is you're, they're never going to find out the true story. They will never find out because this guy's nuts. Well, the true story is, is he killed? Well, but I mean, the, the, what happened behind it. Well, I think what happened behind it is he, I think mean, anybody, no one in their right mind kills their family. No. And I think that there had to be some type of uh, subconscious, um, something being fed into that, into his brain and to they, make him do that. And you know what? When they talk to him, he doesn't break down, he doesn't cry. It's like he it's like it didn't even it never affected him never he's no connection it's like there's co complete separation yep. uh, uh, of the incident isn't yep. that kind of strange i couldn't live with myself i would kill strange. myself yeah. if i if i ever hurt anybody now <clears throat> the lutzes um what do you want to talk about the lutzes now they bought this house because um they, they, they both married, they both had kids from previous marriages, and they needed a bigger house. Yeah, now, I, don't, I don't believe that. Oh, you, oh okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. all right, this, this, is, yeah. this is what I'm going to tell you, and then Tim has something else. Okay, so I'm t what I'm going to tell you is that they bought this house um, because they need a bigger house. Um, they both had children, uh, that, which they brought into the marriage. And they, and they looked at this particular house and they liked it because of the price. It was really cheap. I mean, this is a huge house. I think it's like 4,100 square feet. And th there was a sign out on the front of the house that said, High Hopes. Which was put on by the DeFez. Well, they were the ones that put, that put high, hopes. Yeah, high Hopes in there when they moved in there. And, yeah. well, the Lutzes saw that, George saw that, and um, he thought, well, you know, this, this would work for them. Now, I also uh, found out um, that, according to the movie, that they had very little money, and that's not true. Uh, George had a, a good uh, family business, yeah. and uh, he was doing okay. But there is another reason. Uh, I, think, I think he was attracted to the house by the coal. He knew that something there, that murders had taken place there. He had dabbled in the occult uh, prior to um, buying the house. He read a lot of uh, Raymond Buckland books. And a lot of this is uh, in uh, 
a uh, publication from Dr. Kaplan, who is a not noted uh, parapsychologist who did a, a lot of research on the Lutzes. Well, there's a new movie coming out. Isn't it a documentary by... Um, um, uh, yeah, I think it's called My Amityville Horror. And it's by Danny, right? Yeah, it's the by son, Danny Lutz, yeah. yeah. Some of this is discussed in there, I believe. But uh, yeah, he uh, actually, I think, might have actually brought a lot of... If there, if what they said actually happened there with a lot of the paranormal occurrences, I think a lot of them were actually brought on. By the occult. By the occult. He, by what he was doing. I think he dabbled in some of the stuff at the house and actually brought it upon himself. Well, Christopher, who changed his name to Quarantino, is now using Let's Again because he wanted to get away from the horror. He really has, um, a, 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 has had a terrible effect on him. Both of the kids, Daniel and Christopher, has had, they've had a terrible effect of living in that house for the 28 days. It was a horror. It was just a horror for them. And Christopher has come out and talked a little bit about it. Um, he isn't telling all. He must be writing a book or something because he's kind of keeping some of this stuff. I don't know if he's involved in the movie that Daniel is doing because Daniel is actually starring in the movie. Yeah, I think like a lot of these places, uh, you know, they're, a lot of people say, well, why isn't the house active right now? Well, lots of times, you know, like, like at the Sally House, there's uh, certain triggers that I think that uh, that are released or set off that uh, actually make the haunting uh, occur. And, uh, you know. Well, the thing is, if, if, I, if, if, if there are, if there are, okay, if you are not in tune to the paranormal, you don't believe in it, you have no connection whatsoever to it, you're not going to pick up on it. If something that's not happens, true. That's not okay. true. But I think that certain people, like imagine you're, it's like saying, hey, you put a bunch of uh, newspapers in a fireplace. Yeah. But there's yeah. no fire yet. Well, sometimes you need to put the gasoline on the, uh, on the newspaper and light the match. I think that's probably what they did at the Amityville house. With the, by using the gallon of the coal. And like at the Sally house too. I think, yeah, there might have been a haunting there. You know, okay, before, I disagree but... with you. I disagree with you. I believe, because I've seen it myself and other people, I'm in tune to the paranormal, you're in tune to the paranormal, okay? And I, and I know some other people, my family, um, they don't believe in the paranormal. I'm really and, sorry, yes. That's what uh, I say. They, but but don't you don't you see people who don't believe in the paranormal and poo poo it? They're gonna think, yeah, right, okay, come on, something something caused that to happen. You know, they always have an excuse. So when these paranormal things happen, they they have no, they have no clue as to what it is. We would know that it was paranormal, yeah. but they don't. And um and uh, and that's what I think is happening in that house. I think. People, the people that are living in it are prior to the new owners um, because they haven't had enough time. Um, they said nothing happened to them, and that's because I don't think they believe in this. Uh, and, 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 and the sister, too. But they probably wouldn't even tell people if stuff was happening in the house. Well, they wouldn't even understand it. If no, well, they, maybe they just <laughs> they don't want any more attention brought on the house. That's true, too. You know. that, that's a possibility. But all I can say is that, hey, when you go to, like, to different places, um, like the Sally House being one of them, you had people do some stuff down in the basement, what it was, I don't know who did it, we don't know. But whatever is there now is far worse <laughs> than, well, uh, than what I've ever encountered at any other place. So. Well, according um, to Christopher, like you if said... That's, if that's, you know, imagine you go into a house and... You know, six people were killed there and then you go in with the intent to try to uh, pick up on that darkness that I know but that, why uh, because George Lutz did this yeah. before he bought the house he went over there and he started he did, uh, his, he did his homework you know I, I think he did his homework and he knew well that's what Christopher said yeah. that, that he started this even before they moved into the house and it was, was the perfect storm his family the perfect paranormal storm yeah it was like the perfect storm you know he, his family you know the, the almost identical family size 
But Tim, I still don't, I can't figure out, okay. And in a he, way, I think he kind of looks like Ronnie DeFeo. Well, that's, and, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just um, kind of weird. It's, yeah. Not, yeah, because it's Not identically, kind of a, but, you know, but yeah. in, in a way. I mean, they're both white, at least. <laughs> so... Yeah, we're going to be doing some ITC after this, you guys, yeah. at uh, 8 o'clock. A lot of people are asking if we're going to be doing some stuff. We're going to be oh, doing yeah. some ITC here in a bit. We're going to be using uh, Gonsville and uh, a lot of in doing some interesting things. Uh, we're going to make it really interactive for you guys. Um, another thing, uh, Christopher Lutz said that uh, it was one of the scariest houses he'd ever lived in. And he said it is true. It is the most haunted house in America, he truly believes that he saw, uh, he's seen entities, black shadows in the house, and he's had some horrible experiences. He said that scared the crap out of him. That's exactly what he said. Yeah. And I don't know, uh, he's not telling all, like I said, I don't know where, I, I he's up to, I don't know if he's writing a book or whatever, but I think all this is going to come out eventually because like, he's only like giving bit, bits and pieces of what actually happened. And he said George would uh, go over there and he would actually summon the demons and, and call out their names. I don't get it. Yeah, and some of the, you know what I find really kind of disturbing about this whole thing is you look at some of the movies that are out right now, such as like Sinister, probably one of them. Who in the chat has seen Sinister? Um, Sinister, uh, for those that haven't seen it, uh, revolves around a demon. Uh, it's actually a made-up demon called Bagel or the Bag Bagel or whatever. And uh, there's some similarities between uh, the amiable horror and the fictionalized movie uh, Sinister. Basically, you know, the, the whole context of the story is that these uh, kids get actually possessed and they actually end up killing their family. It's a good movie. Yeah, and there's like other demons out there such as Moloch um, that aren't fictionalized, but uh, Moloch and Abazul and stuff like that that um, actually are the taker of uh, chill or taker or soul uh, demons uh, that basically possess children and make them do bad things. So do you think them. it's possible that he could have been possessed uh, by a demon as well as a, an Indian chief? I think it's just some negative, some bad energy. I don't know if it's a demon or what, but there's just like a lot of similarities between, you know, this. And you go to just to how the families were killed. And you go like to uh, some of the other like notable haunted locations, such as Valeska. I mean, you had six, I think it was six people, um, two adults, four kids that were uh, murdered in, uh, by an axe. And, uh, I just find it really weird that uh, they were not awoken. They didn't even, I, they were. I mean, I, first but, thing I would do would be, I would, I would jet out of the house so quick. But the thing about it is, I would run out is, of the window. <laughs> but the thing about it is, that right. was what was the murders committed? Those were in uh, early 1900s. Okay. Yeah. So, how does anybody actually know what happened when the murders were taking place? And, and it, it, is well, it, if you're sleeping, I mean, if I hear an axe hitting the, I mean, there's pictures uh, at the Valeska Axe Murder House of the axe uh, marks in the ceiling of where the axe was actually, the guy was, uh, you know, when he was chopping um, the and hacking the, the, the bodies, uh, he was actually hitting the top of the... Oh uh, my God, that guy could have been really tall then. No, this, uh, have you ever been to the, at the axe house? It's really... Uh, because it's an older house. Yeah, okay, so I barely fit inside it. It's like a really? it's like a dollhouse, yeah. Okay, so then as so he really put some force then with that axe because if you lift that axe up like this, it's gonna touch the ceiling. Yeah, if if, yeah. if he's Yeah. Wow, that's it's pretty crazy. Wow. We need to do show on that. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh what else was I going to talk about? Do you guys have any questions or anything? I had something on the tip of my tongue, but... I think George took... Oh, uh, one thing I was going to talk about, too, is also, you know, a lot of people talk about, well, hey, maybe there was like a bubble, a sound bubble. One of the popular theories is that uh, there was a possible sound bubble that 
uh, a paranormal sound level. Hey, that, Hans also said yeah, that. Yeah, that restrained the sound. And I don't know, you know, all I can say is that through my personal experience at the Sally House last year when I went with Patrick, there was a point where we had got separated and uh, there was, I was yelling at Patrick, but he could not hear me. Isn't that weird? And he, yeah, yeah. So that was, so that's and, and he was trying to call me and I could not hear him. And that house is small. I mean, it's like a shed, a two story shed. So that makes so, sense. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's exactly what Hans Holzer said yeah. that happened at the uh, Amityville house. Yeah. Um, you know, but, uh, So, uh, okay, let's see here. Can we elope? That's one of the questions. We're talking about thongs and underwear. All right, uh, do you guys have any questions? If not, we're gonna uh, start getting ready for the uh, ITC part. Yeah, that'll be here. in a half hour. Yeah, that'll be in a half hour. Uh, you guys have any serious questions? <laughs> uh, Kathleen asks, are you psychic? Are you psychic, Tim? Uh, Tim has been held to push me on. We're an old set of Yeah. How long were the bodies left in the house? They found them the next day, right? Uh, yeah, they got them the yeah. next day. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he went to work at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then, like, nothing happened. And then he went over to uh, Henry's bar, and he was telling... Um, uh, and actually, he met up with a friend on the way, and he said, you know, he said, I called my house, but nobody seems to be answering. And But he wanted to just say that for like an alibi. And so then he proceeded on his, and then he called his girlfriend, uh, Sherry, and he went over to her house. They went shopping. He went to the mall. Uh, he went, uh, saw his friend again. He said, I'll meet you back at the bar at 6 o'clock that evening. Mm -hmm. And he met him at the bar. He goes, you know, I... I, I'm still trying to get a hold of my family. Nobody, I think we need to go over there. Yeah. So he goes over there with a couple of his friends, and of course they go in the house and they discover the body. So it was the uh, next day, about 6.30 or so, was when they discovered the bodies. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty yeah. sad story. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I mean, for anybody to kill their own family, it's just... So freaking weird. Well, the thing is, he's not normal, and and he, it, it doesn't phase him at all. He has absolutely no feeling. He's completely separated from this whole thing. Completely It'd be interesting separated. to see if they, if anybody would ever do an exorcism on him. I don't think anybody's gone that route. Or yeah, it would, see, it, would, it would be interesting. He's still alive. I wonder if yeah. I wonder if. Um, Anybody's ever thought about hypnotizing him? But you see, he's in, he's incarcerated now, so. Well, what does it matter to? Him? I mean, if you're serving but, life, I mean, what does it matter to him? Why not just do it? I mean, it's yeah, if you're trying to get forgiveness. You know, trying to get an exorcism. Yeah, someone says uh, the movie is one thing, but what really did what really did the Lutzes experience? <laughs> Well, well that's, they, like, they, that's like, you know, when it comes down to... Well, they said they they're, they levitated in their bed at well, one yeah. time. Um, they were, there was... Uh, oh, another thing is they would see slime on the stairs. They would see blood dripping from the walls. And uh, Lorraine Warren, who did an investigation on the house, uh, said that... Um, said that uh, it was paranormal. Yes, they probably saw it, but when you if you were there and you actually went over to the wall and touched it, there would be no blood, but they were they were seeing it. Yeah. It was, so yeah. It was, for them it was a paranormal thing. Right. Yeah, it's just uh, one of those things where you will we'll probably never know the real story. I don't and think I bet so. just by somebody going in there and actually doing like a real investigation, I guarantee you it probably catch stuff just based on thought form manifestation alone even if there isn't no like real haunting in there i don't think anybody's ever going to be allowed in that house again 
uh, the people that just bought it paid 975000 for the house. Yes, I need to just ask, were there any ever uh, police reports released? Yes, and even those were botched. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to yeah. tell them about the film? No, you go ahead and tell them. You tell them about the film. The, about it. You know, the film where they took the photographs. You said that there were photographs left over from the other investigation. Oh, yeah. Um, um, so. <laughs> uh, some of the film uh, of the bodies, um, uh, actually, somebody actually thought there was a seventh body. <laughs> he was going through all the pictures, and they come across this other dead female, young female. And they go, oh my God, wait a minute. You know, it took them a whole year to figure out what happened. But what happened was the, the investigator who was taking pictures of the crime scene left, went to another crime scene, and took a picture of a, a murdered young female. And that got mixed in with the pictures of the DeFeos. Yeah. And it took them a whole year to figure that one out. Yeah, a pretty, whole year. Pretty stupid. Yeah. Uh, and also, some of this evidence is, has disappeared. The information from the historical so society has disappeared. The information from the library has disappeared. And another thing is the Catholic Church denounces any of this. They said nothing ever happened. Uh, and they will not talk about it. And they denounce everything that the Catholic priest did when he went in there. They won't have any any part of this at all. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the house is creepy. Uh, I'll take one more question, you guys. Uh, so basically, what's going to happen now is actually Doreen and I are just going to stop the show. Uh, if you guys could like the uh, the video, that would be great, and subscribe to us if you haven't. That would be awesome. In about thirty minutes, uh, we're going to start the next. Second part of our Second show. part of the segment where we're going to be actually doing some um, ITC. And some experiments. Yeah, some experiments. It should be good. We're going to contact, hopefully, the DeFeos. And it may be the negative enter entity may, yeah. that uh, yeah. possibly is responsible for this. So we'll be doing a video, video loop uh, feedback, ITC, also some Gons film, which um, I haven't done since the Sally House. And uh, we're going to actually ask for a couple people in the chat to participate with the Frank's Box thing. We're going to do a new kind of new experiment here, which is going to require a lot of uh, participation in the chat. So uh, hopefully through uh, some of these experiments that we do, we can hopefully answer some of the mysteries that uh, surround this case. Hopefully we can get some answers. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank well, you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you for joining yeah. me tonight, Tim. Thank you guys for and joining me. Thanks, yeah. everybody, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll see you. Um, yeah, make sure you guys refresh the page at 745 because the new player will be up on the page. So you need to, if people in the chat can tell the other people just to refresh the page uh, because YouTube requires, requires us to have a different uh, player for each show. So just refresh the page. And uh, we'll see you guys in about 20 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Oh, a show next uh, next Thursday, January yeah, yeah, 3rd. Yeah. Uh, it'll be Hollywood and... Um, demons, demons of Hollywood. Yeah, Holly, yeah. Uh, Hollywood and Demons. Yeah. Are you going to be talking about the Illuminati at all? No, not at that show. Okay. Another right. show. Okay. Okay, thanks, everybody. Cool. Good night. See you in a half uh, hour. Not good night. See you soon. Yeah, <laughs> see you in a half hour. Thank right. you. Bye. Oops. Oops. Yeah, just go ahead and...